You are now listening to episode 27 of the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In this episode, Dr. Taylor covers basic paleo principles. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. Welcome to the Real Health Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, owner and operator of Align Utah here in Salt Lake City, Utah. We're at Salt Lake's premier wellness clinic. And what we do here in the office is we help sick people get well by looking at their spine, by looking at their nutrition, by looking at their functional medicine, their hormone levels and blood testing if necessary, and by looking at their true cellular detox, helping them detoxify. So what we're going to talk about today is one of my favorite topics and one of the most important topics, probably the most important topic, nutrition. Okay, if you're a follower of the podcast, you know, we talk about nutrition all the time because it really is everything when it comes to your health. It is the cause of a lot of your health issues. It is the solution to a lot of your health issues. And there's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of misinformation out there. But it really does start with food because, you know, you put it in your mouth at least three times a day or at least two times a day for some people, but it should be at least three, I think. But, you know, there's no magic number there. But it does really start with food. So what we're going to talk about today is, you know, one of the diets that you hear a lot about, and that's the paleo diet. Okay, so the paleo diet, and I love the paleo diet, but what we're going to talk about today are paleo principles and how, you know, I, my personal beliefs are a little bit fine-tuned as far as, you know, if you just read uh, the paleo diet book or, you know, you just Google what is the paleo diet. So first off, you know, I am, you know, I went to Colorado State University. I have my bachelor's degree in health and exercise science with a concentration in sports medicine from Colorado State University, and that's where the paleo diet was founded, okay? So I have paleo diet in my, in my roots, in my blood, coming from Colorado State University. But, you know, the basis of paleo, and you may have heard this before, is that, you know, it's a, the caveman diet. And I don't like it being called that really. And, and it is really interesting, I think, to look back and, and to hear people that are experts in this and talk about how, you know, compared to our Paleolithic ancestors, you know, we, we haven't changed much. Our human genome, our genetic expression has not changed very much from our hunter-gatherer days. Now, like I said, I'm not an expert on that. They will swear that, you know, we have not changed at all. I think it is, it, you know, it, it's undeniable that we've definitely evolved. You know, people are bigger, they're, they're stronger, they're faster. You can just look at professional sports and see that. But that's, you know, an undeniable truth. But the the fact of the matter is, is that we really haven't evolved genetically that much in the past several thousand years, you know, and so that is what we're looking at is we're looking at the way that the body was designed. And I love that because that's exactly what we teach in the office is to look at the way that the body was designed. Look at God's design. Look at the perfect design for the body. And if you look at that design, you're going to find your causes and your solutions, and you're going to find out what could be interfering with your body's natural, normal ability to be healthy. So I love that. So, you know, going into this, before we get into some of the basics of paleo, you know, our bodies were designed to move, right? I mean, if you think back even 100 years ago, everybody was moving. We didn't have desk jobs. We didn't have office jobs quite yet. That was, you know, the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, things like that. But look back right before that, Everybody was moving. Everybody had a job to do. Everybody had a part to play. You know, as soon as you could contribute, you were contributing. You look at a culture like the Native Americans or you look back at like, you know, settlers or pioneers and they're farming, they're building, they're sewing, they're cooking, they're, you know, we're just always working. We're designed to move. The other thing that I love when you look at the way the body was designed and you start just asking questions about, you know, am I working with the body's natural design? 
you notice that there's one thing that is so incredibly important. And, and this could be a light bulb moment for you if you've never heard this before, but there is one system of the body that is controlling all the others. It controls the endocrine or hormone system. It controls the muscular system. It controls the cardiovascular system. It controls all the other systems, the digestive system, all the other systems out there are controlled by the nervous system. So the nervous system is the most important. It's the master regulator. It's the master coordinator of every single function in the body. So it has to be taken care of. And you do that through, you know, taking care of the brain, brain health, really, really important cognitive function, but also by taking care of the spine. And a lot of people don't know that when the spine loses motion, when it becomes subluxated, when a joint becomes fixated and cannot move properly, this literally sends a cascade of messages into the nervous system, reaching all the way out to the sympathetics, going out to all your organs and your immune function, going out to the adrenal medulla, which is the adrenal, the stress response, going into the thalamus, going into different areas of the brain and really affecting all the areas of your life and of your function and physiology that you have no idea of that it's coming from the spine. And that is the way that the body was designed. So that is my favorite thing. That's why I love doing what I do. Functional medicine, functional nutrition, functional chiropractic, functional fitness even. It's looking at the way the body was designed. And that's what the paleo diet looks at is what were we designed to eat and what were we eating, you know, far back, way back in the day. So, you know, what is the paleo diet and, and what does it look at? Uh, and so the core of the paleo, of, and paleo is really more of a movement now that, you know, it includes things like CrossFit, functional, functional fitness, but the core of paleo is the diet and it is no grains, no sugars, no vegetable oils, which is huge. I mean, you just cut out those three things. That's pretty non-controversial. And instead, in favor of high-quality meat, fish, eggs, and vegetables. Okay, so this goes back to, you've probably heard this term, that we are a species of hunter-gatherers, right? So back, you know, think back uh, 5,000 years ago, what we would do is we would hunt mostly and gather. You know, we've only been farming. Farming hasn't been around for that long. Agriculture has not been around for that long for a long time. You know, we were eating nuts and seeds and things that you could forage, not necessarily grow intentionally, but you could forage different nuts and seeds and things. But a lot of times we're hunting. We're killing our, our food. We're eating meat. We're eating organ meats. We're eating fat. Fat has you know, always been coveted in many cultures for forever. And these are the things that our body is naturally designed to actually run better on. So I want to go through some of the basic principles of a paleo diet, of any paleo diet. Then I want to go through some of the variations or, or things that I believe are, are really important to keep in mind with this because there's a lot of misinformation out there about paleo too. You know, I'm not one that says bacon for breakfast, bacon for lunch, bacon for dinner. My goodness, no. Um, but there are some things about paleo that I do like. I'm an encourager of a plant-based paleo still, but you know, that's it's about 50-50 as far as plant-based and animal-based. But I think that it's really, really important. A lot of people in the paleo circles, I feel like, are focusing too much on the meats, not getting the phytonutrients from their plant base. That's why I say that. But some of the basic principles of paleo. You know, it's always a you know work in progress as far as the, the paleo principles. But these are the basics. Number one, you know, eat real foods. That's a huge one. Uh, eat real food prepared well. You know, you think back once again, the way we were designed, the way the earth was designed, the way that God has made it is that there's foods that, that are natural and foods that are unnatural. That's a common sense one, a real uh, light bulb moment, common sense one, that there are foods by God and there are foods by man. There are foods that our body knows what to do with. There are foods that our body doesn't know what to do with. The paleo has no room for anything that's been packaged, processed, or preserved. Because what would you know a, a caveman look look like if he saw a box of, you know, hamburger helper 
uh, and thought that that was actually food. Um, that's the way that you should be thinking. That's not real food. So eat real food, whatever you do. Uh, the number one principle that I love is don't eat grains. Cut out wheat, cut out corn, cut out rice, cut out any other grains. Whole grains doesn't matter. Refined grains doesn't matter. Cut them out, cut them out, cut them out. Gluten-free doesn't matter. Cut them all out. So, you know, gluten is in things like wheat, rye, barley, uh, heavy in gluten. But you want to cut out all the other grains, too. They are inflammatory. Your body does not know what to do with them. You know, you can do some research. On We're actually going to do a podcast episode soon on why you should go grain-free, what the science is behind it. But cut it out completely. Wheat is by far the worst. Uh, rice is the most benign, you know, or quinoa, I'd say. But cut them out, cut them out completely, 100%. Uh, don't eat any other sweets either. You know, grains are inflammatory, but there's no sweets. There's no sugar. There's no sugar, you know, replacers either. You don't want to have corn syrup. You don't want to have agave or honey or maple syrup or any artificial sweeteners. Maybe stevia just, you know, for taste bud change, but I would recommend no sweeteners at all. No sugars added or even... Uh, even natural sugars. And even, you know, watch your fruit. You know, there's not a lot of fruit that's typically involved with, uh, with the paleo diet. Um, the one fruit that is okay are, are berries uh, or Granny Smith apples or some of the, like, uh, uh, not, not as tropical fruits. You know, you can eat avocado. Avocado is a fruit, and so a lot of times we talk about, you know, avoid fruit. And we'll forget to mention that. Still eat avocado. Absolutely. It's not a sugary fruit. It's not high in fructose. But berries and Granny Smith apples, those are a little bit lower glycemic, lower sugar foods there. Uh, and there's a lot of, well, here, let's go through a couple of the other don'ts. You know, no beans or legumes. That's a big one. Along with the grains, they're just really inflammatory. And our bodies just weren't designed to be able to break these down. And in the paleo era, we weren't farming these things yet. They weren't necessarily around yet. Our bodies aren't, aren't designed to be able to handle these things. So no beans, no legumes, uh, no peanuts, no black beans, no anything like that. So right away, you know, we're talking about, you know, like look at, look at a typical Mexican meal or something with a tortilla, no go. Um, no black beans, no rice. And then an, another one, too, is a typical paleo will say no dairy. Okay, so no dairy is typical of paleo. Now, I alter that and say that uh, raw dairy is completely fine and actually very, very beneficial to your health. Unless you're sensitive to casein or you're sensitive to lactose, raw dairy is completely fine. With the grains, I say no exception. With dairy, I say raw is fine. Raw milk, raw cheeses, raw kefirs can be incredibly great for your body. So that is one of my exceptions uh, that you can have raw dairy. No soy. So that's something that you might have heard me say before. No oils. This is a huge one, huge one, huge one. These oils are destroying us. And I'm, I'm not kidding when I say that. Uh, if you look at the charts of when these oils have been introduced compared to what people used to eat. So, you know, the only dairy that you might want to have, butter. Butter's huge on the paleo diet. So you do want butter. Ghee is fine too. But you look at these charts of the intake of butter, how much butter we used to intake versus how much oils we used to intake and how much oils we intake now versus butters. And they've completely flip-flopped and it's caused this massive, massive increase worldwide of heart disease. So no oils, no canola oil, no corn oil, no soybean oil, no cottonseed oil. Make your own mayonnaise. Don't eat fried foods at a restaurant. Uh, no hydrogenated fats. Those are horrible, horribly damaging. And they are not something that your body knows what to do with. And they're not something that was around 10,000 years ago. So is it a food by God or is it a food by man? They're 100% food by man. And even though it has the word vegetable in it, oh, it's a vegetable oil. It must be healthy. Uh, no. And just because the other one has the word fat in it, you know, butter, ghee, lard, tallow, 
unrefined coconut oil, olive oil, high fat. Don't be scared of those things. Those are actually going to increase your health, decrease your risk of disease long term. Eat the fats, eat the fats, avoid the bad oils. They are horrible. Along with that, you know, you want to make sure you watch your uh, ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 uh, polyunsaturated fat. So most people are way too high. You can go back and listen to past episodes about this. But most people are way too high in sixes, which are f- inflammatory. Those come from vegetable oils, from hydrogenated oils. We're far too low in omega-3s, which come from grass-fed beef, come from salmon, uh, come from even things like flaxseed is an omega-3 ALA. It has to be converted into to EPA in your body, but still an omega-3 source. We're way too low in the anti-inflammatory omega-3. So a paleo diet keeps in mind a healthy omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. So it is very, very heavy on meat products, okay? And, and a lot of paleo people that you read is, in my opinion, too heavy, but you want to watch, you know, your meat intake, but it's for the most part, it's unlimited as far as animal products, um, unless you're, you know, just going really crazy on it. But with that, you want your beef to all be grass fed. That is massively, massively important. If it is not grass fed, do not eat it on a paleo diet. That's when you can switch to more of a plant based paleo, more of a, you know, nuts and seeds and salads and, and hunter gatherer type meals rather than uh, strictly animal products, okay? So that is a huge one. Has to be grass-fed beef. Has to have that good omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. The other thing is wild game. Wild game is great. Doesn't have to be grass-fed because it's wild, right? So uh, antelope, deer, rabbit is a great one. Oregon meats are a really good one. So liver uh, is a, is a you know, really good one. You can get other organs, you know, especially if you're a, a hunter, you can get, you know, a lot of different organ meats. That's a really good thing that's paleo approved. Uh, different birds, different game, uh, as far as fowl, uh, really good paleo approved. Bison, elk, any of those meats, very, very paleo approved. The one that I would say that is controversial the most to me is pork. That's why I'm not a big fan of bacon. Yeah, turkey bacon, sure. An organic, hormone-free, antibiotic-free turkey bacon, absolutely. But I'm not a big fan of pork. Pork is, you know, just in general a toxic meat. Uh, so that is, you know, something that I try to to avoid. And in fact, I don't really do any pork really ever. Might have had a piece of ham over Christmas, but uh, very rarely. So then what you can snack on, you know, you can snack on things like nuts and seeds. That's a big one. You know, and, and then the other thing is looking at your vegetables. Nuts and seeds are the biggest thing to stack on. And that's pretty much it when you talk about what foods are paleo versus what foods are not paleo. Nuts, seeds, high-quality animal products, uh, some fruits, most vegetables, the starchy ones you want to stay away from the most, grains you want to eliminate completely. But here's a couple principles that I want you to keep in mind if paleo is something that you want to consider. Like I said, I am a 100% firm believer in the paleo diet, but it's a broad umbrella, and there are some specifics that you want to watch out for in. So like one of the things that I like is you know, paleo will encourage you, a lot of resources, a lot of books will encourage you to be careful about goitrogens, which are thyroid blockers, uh, and also, you know, be careful about legumes, which can also be goitrogenic, which can impact your thyroid. But here's what I think that you need to need to have, too. You need to have, first off, you need to be pork-free, like I said, pork-free paleo, and I prefer a plant-based paleo, and here's why. Uh, you can still get a lot of good fats from your plants, from avocados, from coconut products. Now, if you live on a farm or you live in the woods and you're hunting and you're gathering and you're killing your own game or you have you raise your own cattle or you even raise your own, you know, pigs and you know how how the what their toxic burden is like and what their diet is like and you know, is it grain based or is it their natural diet, especially for, for the beef? Are they pasturing? Are they you know, grazing, or are they just in a feedlot being stuffed with grains? If you're doing that, then eat all the animal products you want, okay? If you're a fisherman and you're catching your own salmon, eat it till the cows come home. 
But for most of us who are getting our food at Costco, who are getting our food at Sprouts, who are getting our food at you know a, a natural grocers or an, a good meat store, even though it's really high quality stuff, I'd still say to be plant based. You're gonna get the majority of your nutrients from plants. You can still get high fats. You can still eat flaxseed. You can still eat avocado. You can still eat all the coconut products in the world, but still keep it plant-based. So a lot of salads, a lot of things, you know, just cut up in with your meats, a lot of sides of, you know, steamed veggies is, is just a great way of doing doing a lot of your veggies, especially your cruciferous vegetables, because it blocks the goitrogens or it turns off the thyroid blocking stuff. A lot of them, you know, eat raw, just eat raw. That's, you know, what would a paleo person do? They might not make a fire right there. Um, so eat them raw, but you gotta, you gotta keep it plant-based in my humble opinion. The other thing with plant-based is you have to be phytonutrient rich. That is a basis of functional nutrition is to keep your diet phytonutrient rich. And a good way to know is it phytonutrient rich is are you eating every day, you know, even with a paleo diet, even if you're doing, you know, bulletproof coffee with your coconut milk or your butter in your coffee in the morning, and then you're doing, you know, bacon, 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 you're doing meat and you're doing uh, all all the the basic paleo CrossFit type principles keep it phytonutrient rich rich by looking at are you eating every color of the rainbow every single day are you eating something red are you eating something green something blue something purple something orange something yellow you know all these different colors when you look at a salad or you look at you know a salad bar especially you see all the colors of the rainbow and that's no coincidence that that looks you know pretty and looks good that's what you want to be eating all those colors literally represent different things that are helping your body. Each one of those colors is an indicator of a different vitamin or a different nutrient or a different enzyme that's going to help your body function at its optimal level. So be plant-based, be phytonutrient-rich, be pork-free, do raw dairy or no dairy at all raw dairy or no dairy at all. And then the last thing that I'm a, a big fan of is adding in on top of the paleo is adding in uh, fermented foods. And that's something that it's not necessarily not paleo. From what I've read, it's all approved. But uh, pa- fermented foods are, are an ancient healing method. And that's something that's going to help keep your gut healthy by fermenting foods like cabbage. You can ferment peppers. You can ferment really anything. But it's an ancient healing principle that keeps your gut healthy by giving it a good, powerful dosage of probiotics. So paleo, a plant-based paleo, plant-based pork-free paleo with fermented foods is an awesome, awesome diet for the rest of your life. And diet, you know, has a negative connotation, but diet comes from the Greek word of diatia, meaning the way of life, your way of life. So don't think of your diet as something that you're going to do for 30 days or 60 days, like a whole 30 or something, which is great, a great, great, great Kickstarter, love whole 30. But don't think of it as something you're going to do for 30 days. Think of it as something you're going to do for the rest of your life. So in the next couple episodes, what we're going to do is we're going to dive into some of these paleo principles and have a little mini series called principles of going paleo. So we're going to go into why you should go grain free. We're going to go into grass fed animal products. We're going to go into these in detail and just look at these principles, but start to think about this and just start to think about that, you know, that concept that we talked about at the beginning. Is this the way that my body was designed? Is this what my body wants to do? Is this what it's longing for? Is this what it's designed for? And if it is, then keep doing it. And if it's not, stop doing it. Make sure you go back into the archives, download past episodes. Every episode that you hear about gut health, about sugar, about fats, about proteins is going to follow these paleo principles, okay? So remember, paleo is not, in my opinion, a thing. It is a whole culture. It is a way of looking at things. It is a a way of thinking. And everything that we do here kind of falls under that paleo umbrella, but there are a few, you know, a few traps that you can fall into within the paleo world. So once again, this is Dr. Taylor Crick. Make sure that you go back past episodes. Also check out our YouTube channel. It's uh, search Align Utah. You can see some of the results that people are getting by getting their spines adjusted and by 
implementing these paleo principles by getting true cellular detox, see people losing, medi- or losing weight, getting off a dozen medications, stop having seizures, no more wetting the bed, no more ear infections in kids, all kinds of amazing things that we see here. And you know, it has nothing to do with us, it has everything to do with the amazing design that your bodies have that's innate, that there's nothing that you can do about your design that way. So work with that design. Also make sure you drop me an email if you have any questions. It's Dr. Taylor with no period. D-R-T-A-Y-L-O-R at WeAlignUtah.com. That's W-E-A-L-I-G-N-U-T-A-H.com. Thanks. Make sure you stay tuned next week. We're going to continue diving into these paleo principles. Thank you for listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. 